Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Everyday Cardio for the Everyday Guy. The question, should you buy a gun? Are you the right kind of person to own a firearm? A really difficult question to answer, a question I get asked a lot, especially since lockdown has began, the whole COVID-19 uh, situation has got a lot of people on edge. So, this video is going to do one of two things. It's either going to put you off firearms completely, or it's going to prove to you that you are the right person to own a firearm and that you actually do want a firearm. The first thing I want to talk about straight off the bat is the cost. People have huge misconceptions about what it takes to go from not owning a firearm to owning a firearm and having it on your person, i.e. taking it home. So let's run through some of the cost. A standard firearm, something like this Glock 19X, is probably going to cost you in and around the region of between say 10 and 11 and a half thousand rand give or take let's round it off to 10,000 rand so that's your base firearm now before we even go further a lot of people are on pinterest and all those crazy places looking at firearms and they think that they're going to buy something like this something that looks like this okay let me just uh, clear your your train of thought here this is a glock 19 gen 4 it predates this firearm by i don't even know how many years but that firearm that you just saw is a 20 to 25 thousand rand firearm so if you on pinterest and instagram and you're checking out everybody's cool looking guns and they got red dots and slides and everything and you think that's what you're going to get understand that base firearm to get into that uh, configuration you're probably going to look at about 20,000 Rand. But let's work on 10,000 Rand because that's more than likely what the shop is going to sell it to you for. So 10 grand for your base firearm. Before you can get that firearm, you need to be proven competent. That means writing an exam, doing a little shooting. That exam, that little shooting probably costs you, if I remember correctly, around 1,200 to 1,400 Rand. Let's make it 1,200 Rand. And then you'll need to send a motivation. A motivation is basically exactly as it sounds. You need to motivate why you want a firearm. I would recommend getting professional to assist you with this. That could cost you in around 500 to 1,000 Rand. Let's round it off to 750. And once you've done all that, there's going to be a waiting period. Usually it's maybe 6 to 12 months, give or take. And this relates to people in South Africa only. I don't know what it's like in any other country. But if you are in any other country, maybe have a listen and see what it's like in South Africa to get a firearm. Also not to forget, you've got to have a safe and have it mounted. Let's round that off to about 2,000 Rand. That's actually an accurate figure on what it's going to cost. So now you're prepared for your firearm. You've waited 6 to 12 months and you finally get it. You're at the gun shop and they hand it over to you. You've got to buy some ammo, obviously. This should be carry ammo. You choose your particular flavor, but you are looking at about eight to 900 Rand for 50 rounds. You've got to buy this because what's the point of having a gun if you don't have ammunition? And then you've got to look at carrying a gun. Carrying a gun is not something like you see in the movies where people tuck it into their pants. You can do that. It's highly idiotic and I extremely very much to my absolute core don't recommend that you should carry your gun in a holster. More often than not, you're going to need a Kydex holster. This is probably going to cost you around 1,300 Rand. That Kydex holster is going to need to go on a proper gun belt in order for you to conceal, we'll get to concealment in a moment, in order for you to conceal, right, you've got your fire mask to be concealed all the time, so a proper gun belt's probably going to cost you another 1,000 Rand, and then you've got to remember, your clothing is going to change, those days of skinny jeans and slim fit t-shirts are over, you've got to wear clothing, for lack of a better term, baggy enough, so that you can slide your fire into the holster, into the inside of your waistband of your pants, and that your t-shirt or whatever cover garment you have covers it in such a way that it is concealed. Concealed to a point where a onlooker cannot identify that you are carrying a firearm. So those all come to around 17, 18, 19,000 Rand, okay, for a base firearm. And that is the bare minimum. Don't kid yourself, you're not going to get away with anything cheaper than that. And then there's the extremely important fact to consider, which is training. A firearm is very much only as useful as the person shooting it, okay? And that's going to come down to training. If you aren't trained or you aren't going to invest in training, you are not going to do a good job of owning a firearm. I can guarantee you this. It's not something that you can buy and just keep in the safe for the days you go out and you wear them when you go out and, and you think you're going to be good. It's not the case. You don't want to learn that you aren't trained in the middle of a gunfight, okay? Training, 
I would say five to 10,000 Rand a year. And it's a perishable skill. You've got to continually do it. You've got to continually shoot. If you shot while at, on the 1st of January, 2020, and you don't shoot again until the 1st of January, 2021, your skill level will have diminished. So it's something you have to keep on doing. So if you're okay with all of that, and you have the resources and you dedicate it and you train, and you're willing to wait the, the, the period of time, you want to look at your personality. I hate saying this, but not everyone is the right person to own a firearm. If you have an ego issue, for example, if you're easily riled up, if you drink quite a bit, then owning a firearm might not be the best route for you, okay, unless you can make a personality change. But if you are someone who's gotten into a few fights in the last few years and you think it's something you're going to continue to do, remember, if it's a fist fight, you're the one who brought a gun to a fist fight. And if at any point that firearm comes into the equation, and it can be proven that you could have avoided it, you are in a ton of trouble. So your ability to walk away if you own a firearm needs to be 17.387 out of 10, okay? It needs to be high level. You sh like a lot of people think, I own a firearm, I'm super cool. Nobody's ever going to know you own that firearm. When you're out and about, you have to dress in such a way that you will always be able to conceal your firearm. So the days of wearing shorts with no belts, that's out of the equation. The days of going to casinos um, without proper planning is out of the equation. You can't carry your firearm everywhere and you need to think ahead. A lot of people tuck in their shirts quite often. Understand tucking in your shirt while carrying a firearm is doable, but it's not easy. If you have a criminal record, I recommend you approach people like gun owners South Africa. I'll leave a link to them down below prior to even beginning the uh, process, they'll be able to give you expert advice at really, really good prices as to whether or not you should go forth or what you should do first um, in order to maximize your opportunity for success. In South Africa, you can't panic buy a firearm, okay? It takes, whether you want, whether you need a firearm right now, it's gonna take like six to 12 months, probably at minimum. On the topic of which firearm to buy, I'm almost tempted to say that if you buy a modern, firearm it doesn't really matter comfort in the hand is always a a a prime uh reason to buy a firearm and i get it but for me the firearm i carry a glock 19 gen 4 isn't really comfortable in my hand uh how much time am i going to spend with my firearm in my hand i've got to be able to shoot it well it's got to shoot whenever i pull the trigger and it's got to be serviceable um, if I need parts, I need to be able to get it. They're, those are like the most important things. And the first one of me being able to shoot it well comes down to training. There are many people who can shoot SIGs, HNKs, uh, CZ, Smith & Wesson, Glocks spectacularly, right? So ability to shoot a firearm well comes down to training. Kind of have a good idea of what you want to buy before going to the gun shop. The reason I say that is, remember, a lot of people who work in gun stores are salespeople. Okay, so they might initially try to sell you that uh, 13,500 Gen 5 MOS and then realize you only have 6,000 and, and try to sell you like some really, really cheap, not good firearm that you probably shouldn't be buying. So do your research on what firearm or what type of firearm you want, budget accordingly and then go to the gun shop and listen to them and learn and come back and do more research. It's going to be a long process anyway. Speak to people who are in the know and they give you more often than not proper advice. Remember, buying a non-common firearm means you're going to struggle to find holsters. You do not know how many times I get DM'd about people who can't find holsters because I post every single day on Instagram and I show different holsters and people are like, well, they don't make that holster for my Light Phaser 70321 that I bought in freaking Kriblakistan 17 years ago. Understand, modern holsters are going to be made for the most common firearms. Glocks, CZs, SIGs, Smith & Wessons, if you're in South Africa, uh, probably in that order. The second last thing I want to say is, understand, carrying a firearm is not an inherently comfortable thing, right? It is substantially less comfortable than not carrying a firearm, okay? But there are certain things you should be able to do while carrying a firearm. I think I outlined them in one of my videos. It'll pop up in the screen. Watch that video and you'll, I'll explain to you what a holster should and shouldn't be able to do. But carrying a firearm is not an inherently comfortable thing. And more often than not, remember guys, no one's going to know 
the rig you're carrying. No matter how cool it looks to you, if you're buying this in order to look cool, you can get right over that because no one's really going to know about it. All you're going to look like to everybody else is a guy with maybe a bit of a belly. Um, so if you're carrying in the appendix position, which I hate to say this, I kind of recommend. Remember guys, everything on the channel is an opinion, nothing is a recommendation. A lot of people still carry in three, four, five o'clock positions. That's great. For me, the appendix works better. That's why I'm recommending it. I wouldn't recommend something that doesn't work well for me. But that's also going to do with my body shape. So keep that in context. And then guys, last and most importantly, the reason you should buy a firearm, right? If you've gone through this entire list of things that I've said and you said, you know, I'm cool with all of that is because bad guys have firearms, okay? And since the beginning of time, you have to fight with weapons that are equivalent or better to your enemy. It is very rare that people with firearms who intend to do harm are persuaded otherwise by people without firearms. So if you are someone who is concerned with safety, who is prepared to be that silent first responder that no one sees ever, right? Who disappears into the background, but is very quietly going about his business, knowing he has the ability to protect himself and others should they so need it. But understand that 99.9% .9 of the time, they are not going to need to do it. Then carrying a firearm actually is for you. And you will be part of a very, very quiet community that serves the greater community in, a, in an amazing, selfless way. So guys, if you intend asking me whether or not you should buy a firearm, what firearm you should buy, I'm going to send you this video link because I might as well get the views because I'm going to answer the question anyway. That is my overview to the questions you should be asking yourself if you are looking to own a firearm and I can't answer them for you. Like I've probably told easily 200 people in the last five days, I can't tell you whether or not you should buy a firearm without going into your personality. Okay, so look deep within yourself, ask yourself, are you that kind of person who will go through all that discomfort just to sometimes only know that you could protect yourself and never ever have to. Um, and if you are, then firstly, you are excellent and well done. Um, and maybe also subscribe to this channel because I'm then just like you. And in that case, you probably should uh, go and look at getting yourself a firearm. Guys, I hope this helps. I will see you guys soon for another review or chat. Who knows? Have a good week. I'll see you soon. Cheers. God bless.